I have a story to tell about a lady who lived in the back country roads. She was a very kind-hearted woman. She was alone. And she had a heart for Mother Nature, for all of its beautiful living creatures. Even some that others feared, she loved. Well, let me tell you what happened one day. She was driving to market and she saw, or excuse me, she drove to the market on the way home. She saw something in the road. So she gets ready to get out of the car and she wants to see what is this thing laying in the middle of the road? It was kind of like dusk to dark right in there. <clears throat> and there were no street lights. So all she had were her headlights to go by. She didn't want to get too close because she wasn't sure what kind of creature it was. So she gets out of the car and she inches towards it and she notices it's not moving. So she gets a stick and she gets close enough to it to realize, oh, that's a snake. So she thought it might have been dead. So she's kind of tapping it and it kind of wiggles a little bit, but she could tell, she discerned through her compassionate eye that the snake was wounded, badly wounded. Well, out of her heart, out of her love for nature, she gathers the snake up very carefully, you know, so it doesn't bite her, and she puts it in a sack and eases it down, and drives back to the house. And she takes the snake out and she gives it water, she puts it in a container and puts cushion under there so he can be comfortable and that way he can crawl out. And as time went on, she's taking care of this little snake. It was a beautiful snake, too. Beautiful colors, you know, how some snakes have the vibrant colors and some just look scary. This one was pretty. And she's taking care of this pretty snake. And oh, my goodness. The more she took care of it, the more she loved it. She drove into town, first chance she got, and went to the vet. Took the snake to the vet. The vet examined it. It was not near death. It was not critically wounded, but it was incapacitated for a while. So what she did was she helped the snake, according to the veteran, the veterinarians, <laughs> according to the veterinarians' instructions, and gave it whatever medication, whatever food it, it gave, okay, whatever he prescribed. And so she bought everything. She goes back home, takes the snake with her, and um, now she's nursing it even further, and she's doing a better job because she has, you know, good advice. And the snake is recovering. He's showing signs of strength and vitality, and his appetite is coming back, and he just, he's looking stronger, he's acting stronger, and finally she realizes he is full totally healed i mean fully healed just totally recovered and she just feels so so warm and fuzzy inside because she has just grown to love this beautiful snake and she's really grown attached to it right okay so one day she decides to pick up this pretty little snake and she holds the snake in her arms and she looks at it and she says I love you. I love you so much. We are such a beautiful snake. Look at you. You could be mine forever. And she reaches down and she just couldn't resist. And she kisses the snake. And next thing you know, and she's, oh, no. What are you doing? Oh, oh. And as she rips it off, she looks at it. And she feels, she feels her life starting to, starting to leave her slowly. And, 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 and I mean, it's very venomous. And she's, she's starting to get weaker and weaker. And she slithers down in her chair, slumps down in her chair. And, and she looks at it and she says, I, I nursed you. I, I rescued you. I fed you. I, I took care of you. I did everything. I loved you. How could you do this?
promise to me? And the snake replied, quite matter-of-factly, you knew I was a snake. I paused for a moment because I wanted you to think about the story in regards to some of the men we choose, ladies. And some of the ladies we choose, gentlemen. Sometimes we fall in love with a snake. And we think we can take a snake and turn it into an angel. Only God can change the, le the skin of a leopard. Only God can remove the spots. Only God can turn one creature into another. You cannot. A snake is a snake is a snake. Call a spade a spade. And no need in playing with it. You got yourself a heifer. And young lady, you got yourself a a, let me see, what would my father call him? A good-for-nothing joker? <laughs> and you think you're going to turn this man into something beautiful. And young man, you think you're going to turn this, this crotchety woman, this spiteful, venomous, black widow, into an angel of light or into an angel of mercy. Ain't gonna happen, baby. Ain't gonna happen. You stuck. I hope you didn't get married. Because you still got a way of escape if you're not married. Hello? Stop it. I don't care how good they are in that bed. Shouldn't be in there with them anyway if you're not married. I don't care how good they are in that bed. You're still screwing a snake. Think about it. That thing going to bite you. Listen, one day the Lord gave me a word from one of the brothers at the church years ago. And I told him, I, well, I didn't tell him. I told the group because I really had no idea who this word was for. And since the Lord is bringing it back to my memory, I'm going to share the word with you in case one of you guys are in that predicament. Okay? The word God gave me during this, this overcomers meeting was that someone in the group, one of you maybe, was involved with a female. And this female was at this point only a friendship, but it would quickly escalate if they didn't disengage as quickly as possible. And if they did not disengage and it, es and it does escalate, it's going to blow up in their face and the ramifications and the dues they'll have to pay for years and decades of their life would be almost like living a hell on earth. So I say that in case that word is for any of you young brothers. Bail while you can, brother. Because she's not what you think she is. And if God gives you a warning and the saints give you a warning and your mother gives you a warning and or your father gives you a warning or your pastor gives you a warning or folks just something about it they don't like, guess what? You better back up, Charlie. Back that truck up and leave her standing on the curb. Or else she might leave you in a position you never, never be able to live down. You hear me? All right, there's your warning. I'm going to stop now because it can get deep. And I don't want you getting so deep you can't get out. So let's call it quits and say, hey, hasta la bye-bye, baby. Say that to him. And I say to you, God bless you.